Hi, I'm Gene Cavanasis. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I built this Bluetooth retro style speaker. So stay tuned. Okay, so the, uh, the Bluetooth package came in. I'm not going to do an unboxing. I hate unboxing, but I'm just excited to get this open and see what we have because I didn't want to really start cutting out any of the cabinet or building any of the cabinet until I had all the parts. And this must be more wiring. Yep. And the board. So this is cool. And what I'm really excited here for is it really is a pretty small footprint. This is the biggest piece of this. And this is gonna support the, the board. So we'll start figuring this out and see how that goes. I always like to start out by rough sketching out my concept ideas. I think I'll settle on this design. So from there, I'm going to move on and start kind of finalizing and flushing out that design that I want to follow. Once I've got that, I'm going to start out using a two by two foot by half inch piece of MDF I picked up from the hardware store. I'm marking it off at six inches and I'm going to cut two pieces off that are six inches high by roughly about 14 inches. Here I'll start laying out my design of how I want the basic shape to be. I'm going to round off the corners using a compass and then also I'll come back and start doing some of the inside detail of this. This includes a recessed piece with a rounded center. And then I want to come back and also put the circle in where the speaker cone will be cut out. So these two pieces will be cut out together. So I'll basically cut the six inch piece out and then a second six inch piece. And I'll come back and I'm going to stick these down together using some double stick tape that is removable. Make sure you line up the bottom edge good and straight. It really makes it nice being able to cut both pieces at the same time for accuracy. Now I'm going to take and mark out at the indention into the front. This is going to be roughly the same thickness that I'll later on route into the face of that. Now using the top and sides I'm going to mark where I'll cut each of the pieces and label those to the, the front piece, the bottom piece, the top piece, and the I guess the forward or very front piece. That'll help later on, trust me. I'm able to just use the bandsaw on this, but you could use a table saw to cut 90% of those out too. I got my pieces cut. Make sure I'm showing which direction things are. I'm going to use a jill to pilot that speaker hole and using a jigsaw I'll go ahead and cut these out. Now I'm going to route that quarter inch deep section that'll give a nice clean inset to the design. I'm going to use a template to make my straight edges, but I'm basically freehanding the round curve. I'll straighten up the speaker holes using a oscillating sander. I'll put a link to this little tool. It's been a great tool for me. Using the actual front, I'm going to make marks as to where I'm going to groove that out to match the indentions on the front. Once again, I'm going to create kind of a template or a jig to run the router along. 
also I just want to mention always wear eye protection and ear protection. That routed out just fine. I'll do a little sanding and uh, we're going to be good to go with that. I'll also sand off the sides of these. Now if you noticed I up to this point I've left the two pieces stuck together. I wanted to do the sanding and the hole cut at the same time. I'm going to drill an inch and a quarter inch hole in the front and this is going to be for a sound tube that will go in to also help push out the sound. Now, I have separated those two pieces, pulled the double stick off, and I'm basically going to make the marks where I'm going to want the control knobs to go. My first mark seemed a little high, so I'm going to come back a little lower. Now, getting an indication of what knobs and controls I'll need, I've got the volume knob, I've got the on and off switch, and then there is also three LED lights that will go on the front as well. So I'll use the tape measure and basically equally mark those off. Now the on off switch and the volume will have to be separated a little bit further. I also noticed that in order to screw those down, I'm going to have to route out the backs about a quarter inch down. This will allow me enough room to get a hold of the, the set nuts on the back to tighten these up. Using the drill press, I'm going to go ahead and drill about a 3 8 hole for all of the pieces. This includes the LED lights, the volume knob, the on-off switch, and even on the back side, it'll include the power switch, and the auxiliary plug. Now I'm marking the backs of these where the speakers will be screwed down and once I mark those I'll pre-drill those. And you want to be careful that you don't drill too far. You don't want to drill all the way through. Oh. Now we're going to start putting some of the pieces. I've drilled everything out. I think I want to start with this part. This is probably the most critical part. So I'm going to use some of this Starbond medium glue. Keep using it and so far I have really, really liked what, what it can do. So this glue is like a crazy glue. It sticks extremely fast and it makes it great on projects like this because you don't have the wait time of waiting overnight for like a wood glue to set. Make sure that I'm good and square with this but it's already setting up. So now I'm ready to set the top piece on. Now if you notice, the top piece is a little oversized and that's because I'm going to want to sand those end pieces off. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the Starbond medium glue to set this up. Now it goes on quick and I'm also going to use the spray accelerator. This really speeds up the process. You don't have a lot of time to set it, but it does a great job sticking. It's amazing how fast this stuff sets up. So now I'll set up the bottom piece. Set that in and you want to be careful you don't have a lot of time. Okay now that these pieces are on there we can uh, get the front set back on or on. I'll go ahead and use the accelerator on this as well. You want to make sure that bottom is as close as possible. Same with the front. Now I put some weights on this, but to be honest, within minutes this thing is set up and 
ready to go. Okay, we're now ready to go out and start trimming that down. I'm trying to look like a birdhouse. <laughs> So we're going to head out to the belt sander. It's a nice day, so I set it up outside. And just work the belt and bring everything right down to the same surface. MDF sands really easy, but the great thing too is it's very, very smooth. I'm going to put a half round bit on this to run around that edge. I think that's going to help to give it the look we want. Now, if you don't have a router table, you can also use this same bit and just a, a handheld router. I then came back and ran the orbital around it to smooth it down. And then I'll also come in with some 220 sandpaper and do a little hand sanding as well. Okay, pretty well got this shaped out the way we want. So I want to start getting the inside ready to handle how that fits. So this is a piece that's the correct thickness. But because of the angles here and here, we're going to want to customize them. And I'm going to want those these to stick out probably three quarters of an inch. So setting the bandsaw on an angle, I can cut these out so that they fit flush inside of the Bluetooth speaker. I'm marking the front and the back of each of these so I know the fit is exactly what I want. Gluing them up, you're going to spray the accelerator in and set these pieces in. I'm going to use a piece of scrap that's the same thickness as the back or the bottom of this to use as a template or a guide of how deep to set these. I also drew a line with a pencil so that I can basically see. And I'm doing this on the front and the back of the speaker. Now I'll test to make sure that fits. It's gonna work fine. I'll need to trim it down. And I did have to do a little shaving on one side to make it perfectly flush. I'm gonna use some wood filler and just fill in any of the edges that seem like they're not quite totally filled. There was about three spots on there. Just quick knock down. I'll take this outside and use a little white primer and spray this down. One thing I want to say is all the paint should be the same brand and the same type. Okay, now I'm going to take some 220. Now I've got this primed and sanded down and it helps me to see any spots that still may need a little bit of filler. I found a couple of spots, so I'm going to go ahead and fill those now. Once they've dried, I go back and smooth them out, and this is ready for more paint. Now I'm using a, a paint that is a primer and a finish coat all in one. It seems to be working well. Okay, as I finish spraying my coat of paint on there, I will be coming back and laying probably about three coats of this paint on there. Moving on, I'm going to be cutting a sheet of quarter inch MDF, and these will become the silver bars that wrap around the speaker. I cut these at six and three quarter inch wide, and then cut each one off at about six and a half inches. Now, the top and the bottom will actually end up by design being a little shorter than the center. But this is strictly on how you decide you want it to look. Sanding off the corners, I'll now take it inside and lay out how deep I need to cut these. So I'm going to use the bandsaw again to cut the insides out. But even after I cut the basic thickness, I know I'm going to have to come back and trim the last little piece that's going to fit 
on the the Bluetooth speaker where it raises up right here. So on all three of these I'm going to put a basic mark and come back and trim another quarter inch off of those. I'll go back out to the sander and round off the end pieces and just smooth them out. And I'll also give them a little bit of a hand sanding to knock off any loose material. I'll go ahead and spray the silver paint on these and I'm going to want to apply several coats. After one side dries I'll flip over and spray the other sides as well. So now I'm going to use some Valspar Satin Black latex paint. Brushing this on is pretty easy even with my extremely shaky hands. And I wanted the surface to be a little textured, so I like how this is going on. Okay, so now the basic body's done, and I'm holding off on putting the, the grill on until I get the speakers and everything else pretty much in the cabinet. So right now I want to concentrate on getting the electronics put into this. It's a good thing I pre-drilled for the speakers, because setting the screws in there is not easy. But you can take your time and get through it. And now setting in the LED lights, pulling those through along with the volume and on-off switch, and placing the power connector and the audio jack in as well. The instructions are really pretty simple. They tell you where every single plug needs to go in. I'm going to go ahead and screw the base plate down to the bottom of the cabinet and then I'll solder the connections on the power jack to the back. Now this is about all the real soldering you'll need to do besides the speakers. Once I have that set on I can plug that exactly where it tells me to do that on there. I can go ahead and hook in the rest of the connections. These are for the speaker wires down below and the print shows you the positive and negative on all and I'm going to go ahead and solder those down to the speakers. Now you could also just use crimp on plugs if you didn't want to solder. Now following the directions I plug all the rest of these into the circuit board and then I screw the circuit board down onto that bottom plate. I picked up a piece of PVC tubing and I'm going to use that as a sound tube to also help push the sound out. I'll carefully tuck the wires in and set that bottom down into place. Now using some little rubber feet I'm going to also use those to help secure the bottom on. So the rubber feet will also be the screws that hold the bottom into place. This is going to work out just fine. Okay, it looks like now we're ready to start installing those chrome grills. I call them chrome grills, but they're really just silver painted. And I'm going to take a grease pencil and mark off where I want each of those to fit, starting with the middle one. Once I have those marked, I'm going to take the longest piece and set that in. Now you could glue this but I decided to just drill these carefully with a very small hole and put a brad nail down into each. Okay, so the, the kit, the electronics, came with this knob for the volume, and I really wasn't thrilled with that, so I wanted to change it out. So I decided to make one, took a small piece of, uh, looks like three quarter inch dowel. I cut that down, put a volume tone in it, drilled out the back, and then I picked up a cap that is a, a nut a screw cover on a plastic cheap license plate. And I'm gonna glue that 
on top of this just to create more of the knob that I'm looking for. Now, I'm going to use the same medium glue and I'm not going to worry about the accelerator because I need a little time to be able to adjust this to center if I need it. I'll let that sit for a few and see how that works out. I think this is set up well enough that I can take this and just slide that on. And yeah, I definitely like the looks of that better. All right, so now that we've got it all put together, let's check it out. I built the new knob for it. I'm happy with how that works. Let's power it up. This shows the power. This blinks until it finds a Bluetooth channel. We'll go to my phone and see if this works. pretty happy with the way that sounds. If you like this project and you want to see some other projects, consider clicking on some of these other videos and I'll see you soon.